Hello everybody and welcome back to McKinsey Woodworking. Our project today is to replace a, um, a roof uh, on a holiday trailer. It's a 17 foot in 1992 and it has an EPDM roof. It's a membrane roof. Um, it's been leaking pretty badly and you can see it here. Uh, the problem with it is uh, that they have these dams on the front and the back and on the sides and they have the uh, vents uh, that are uh, fastened directly to the roof and there was lots of caulking around and you can see the vents there so we're going to change all that up by uh, going with a fiberglass roof so stay tuned and we'll walk you through the process and we'll get rid of all those and uh, here's the new fiberglass roof that we have on the trailer and as you can see our uh, skylight in the center is raised up and we have a curb on it and the same with the vent on the back and uh, we have a drip edge so that all the water will cascade front and back of the trailer and the sides and go around the skylight so uh, stay tuned and we'll walk you through this project as we go through it first of all we have to take all this off and as I was saying we have an EPDM over uh, a lightweight plywood that's on top of it so we've taken that off and we're replacing it with 3 8 construction grade plywood uh, that we've uh, screwed down to the roof choices and we've done some roof work on the roof choices as well before this to make sure they'll carry the weight and uh, that's uh, glued and screwed and once we get that down we've saturated it with a polyester resin and this is a good saturation uh, we want to fill everything so whenever we're putting down the fiberglass mat uh, we don't want the uh, fiberglass mat to be starved for resin and soaking into the wood so we want to seal the wood so that uh, the resin on the top surface will uh, stay on the mat it's a beautiful fall day here you can see i'm trying to uh, film this with my camera as I'm uh, coating it so and you basically just want to flood coat this on and get everything all sealed and then once we get the resin on it we're going to let the uh, resin sit for about an hour get firmed up a bit and then we've mixed up some um, auto body bondo mm. this is uh, something that's used quite often whenever you're uh, fiberglassing a bondo and uh, what we've done is just filled all the joints and all the uh, divots in, in the plywood and the top of the screws and any of the cracks we don't want the resin to go down through the cracks or or to fill the um, divots uh, left by the screws so if there's any holes or anything uh, we've filled those up as well and here we're just coating our uh, trim boards on the side so these will be our drip caps uh, the ones I have cut are uh, two and a quarter inch uh, these are uh, cypress or yellow cedar and I'm just going to coat those up with our resin and uh, prepare those to accept some mat on them and what we'll do is pre-wrap them first uh, but we'll give them a, the same as the roof deck we'll give them a saturation of uh, resin and get them all sealed up camper trailer and all the materials have been supplied by independent marine supply store and they've supported us to bring this project to you so come on up and visit them they're in mid island marine center at 2451 alberni highway in beautiful central vancouver island and they've just completed a massive renovation to the store and it is lovely all sparkling and shiny new they've been in business for 30 years so uh, they've got the know-how and the ability to get you back on track they've got sounders and radios and fish finders they've got everything that you'd need to repair your boat and fiberglass mat and epoxy and polyester resins and all the hardeners and waxes that you need to complete a project uh, they've got all the fittings in the store um, it's also a great place to go if you have an RV and you want you're doing some work to your RV they've got all the newest and 
lights that are available and the LED lights and they got 12 volt panel systems and they've got wiring and fittings and a great assortment of stainless steel. So come on up and see them and um, see their new store and their offerings. I am just uh, dabbing on the, um, the mat onto the edge and as you can see use a chip brush as a dabber and it's not uh, you're not using it as a paintbrush you're, you're actually wanting to transfer the resin to the mat and I, what we use here is um, uh, we can actually buy pre-cut it's four inches wide by about a 50 foot long roll um, and uh, we're laying that to the edge so, so it's gonna uh, cascade over the side uh, two inches and then go up onto the roof two inches and it's a lot easier to work with a small piece whenever you're trying to go around corners or overlapping or anything. And uh, so once we get that done, and it's allowed to dry for about an hour and a half, uh, then we'll sand off the entire roof and get it readied and prepped uh, to lay the big sheets on. And you can see our drip edge there. You can see how far I've came up on, onto the roof. And what I've done too is I ran a chalk line, as you can see, uh, along the top of the roof just so we had something to follow there and we'll send that off smooth and uh, make sure that there's no bumps or anything on the roof and we'll lay the big sheets uh, of mat on it and they come in rolls and they're 39 inches wide or one meter and there it is there we lay out the entire roof and that's an ounce and a half of chop strand mat and um, what we'll do is trim the excess back and I'm back about a half an inch away from the edge and we have a uh, two inch overlap on the seam there. You can see uh, that, that it seams over top. Uh, this is on a roof so I'm not too worried about um, if there's uh, uh, bumps or anything with the overlap. If I was doing a deck of a boat or, or deck of a home uh, what we do is we use a feather edge where we uh, tear off the edge and just uh, um, roll that in with a steel roller to make sure that it disappears and then we'd give it a, a sand after that but uh, there's some at all laid out on the roof and if you're interested in a complete um, tutorial on this please check out the rest of our videos on the uh, holiday camper renovation at Mackenzie Woodworking and I'm uh, going into the uh, replacement of the fire glass roof in a lot more detail um, but here it is here we're just getting cut off to the edge and we've chalk lined it so we'll uh, get rid of that and if you're doing a project like this never throw away your fire glass mat it's good for everything so here we're just saturating it with the uh, polyester res resin and uh, it just gets rolled on uh, you don't dump the material onto the roof. I, um, I'm taking it out of a bucket. We have a five gallon bucket and we use a seven inch roller so that we can get into the bucket. And I'll just go back and forth until the uh, mat goes translucent. Uh, you want to see your plywood underneath and you'll just keep rolling it back and forth. Uh, I'm using a five millimeter thick roller too. You don't want one too thick. You don't want to put a lot of resin up there. And you just keep rolling back and forth. And uh, what this will do is saturate the mat until it becomes translucent. It'll be uh, there's the bucket. And you can see that I'll just be uh, putting my roller into it. And what I do is when I'm uh, rolling the roof, I'll uh, go along and do the seam first and saturate that seam because you're trying to get through two layers and I'll also take a uh, steel roller and go back and forth on, on the seams to make sure that, that they're sewn together and that there's no air or bubbles in it. But I'll get it saturated first and we'll just go all the way along and uh, get this whole, whole thing saturated. There's a bit of a close-up that you can see it. And I'm just spending some time in the joint. I, um, that's the um, overlap. And because we're trying to go through two layers, I'm really rolling that out and uh, 
rolling the uh, resin back and forth. And once I go so far, then I'll take my the steel roller and really get in there and meld the two of them together. You can see we're getting a good saturation here. We're just about at the end of it here. And we'll just keep rolling this roof until we get it all uh, saturated. And then we'll go over it again and make sure that there's no bubbles. As you can see, it's uh, quite clear. You, you can see right down, down to the plywood. And here we are just cutting out the hatch. And this is a uh, 22 by 22 inch skylight hatch. And we'll, we cut that out after we fiberglass the entire deck because we'll be putting a curb on top of that and we want the, uh, the curb to go on top of the fiberglass underneath. And once we have the opening cut out and then we'll apply our curb to it and what we'll do is just put some uh, floor adhesive uh, glue underneath it. We'll just check it for size first. And our curbs are in two by two cedar. And what we've done is the same thing as our uh, plywood deck. And we've um, uh, coated them with uh, resin first so that they're all sealed. And it's the same thing to uh, keep the mat wet so that it doesn't, um, the wood doesn't suck the uh, resin out of the mat. And uh, we're just uh, checking it for size and it's good. So we'll take that back and put some uh, glue underneath it. And I, uh, I use a polyurethane glue and uh, that bonds good to the deck. And uh, we'll uh, s screw that down. And uh, then we can uh, do the radius on the outside edge. Uh, what we do is we use Bono again and uh, once we get that fastened to the deck, because we don't want a 90 from the deck up, so we want to put a radius and uh, a Bono around the outside edge. And then we'll put our fiberglass mat onto it. So there's our mat, we've uh, cut it the lengths. And you see we have our bondo at the bottom. So that has a nice radius roll from, from the deck. Same thing, we're using our four inch pieces again. And we're only coming up flat to the top and then we'll do another piece from the top and down over the sides. But he, and what we'll do is just pre-coat everything. And you can see that I have my um, bondo in there in the corners. And we'll just give that a really good coating of resin with our chip brush. And then uh, just lay in our mat there and give it a, a good saturation and push it really good into the corners. There again, uh, you want to dab uh, with your uh, chip brush and really get the resin into it. And then I'll roll that out with a uh, with steel roller to make sure that it's bonded and, and they're good. And we'll do this all the way around on all four sides and uh, give it a um, good saturation and wrap the corners. And, uh, and then once this dries, we'll come from the top down over the sides. And it'll be the uh, same application. One note I'll make about the resin is when you're doing this, don't mix a lot of resin. Um, some people like to make a lot and they think that they're going to save time by going back and forth and mixing resins. And uh, what you'll end up doing is throwing a lot of it away. Um, most of the time we shoot for about 15 to 20 minutes of working time with the uh, resin. So uh, the catalyst that we'll be adding will be anywhere from uh, 1.5% to 2%, depending on the temperature outside. But as soon as your resin starts to go a bit jelly on you, and uh, you'll notice it whenever you're working it, at that point, stop. Uh, don't, don't try and keep using it. And uh, don't uh, dilute it. So here it is now. We, we've got the, uh, the mat on the sides all rolled up, and, and I've uh, rollered it all out. And it's uh, fastened down to the deck. And uh, we're just getting ready to uh, coat everything now. And uh, there's our uh, gel coat. And that's our top, top coat. We'll be putting two coats on. 
and the first thing I do is take a chip brush and I'll do all the um, vertical surfaces or any corners or anything. First we'll um, uh, coat that on and with a brush and with the gel coat you really want to put a lot of it on and just let it flow. Uh, I'm not going to do the top surface right away. I'll uh, do the sides and if you notice it goes on quite thick and you want it to flow in and we're, we are doing two coats so this first coat is non-waxed and that's so that we can apply a second coat to it. Um, when you purchase your gel coat you're actually going to want to get it uh, non-waxed and, um, and what they'll do is they'll give you a little container of wax and they'll uh, tell you the ratio that you want to add the wax to it and they'll give you that uh, shiny glossy surface. And now we'll just uh, go towards the end and we'll start to roll that on. And uh, there again we have a uh, a five millimeter roller. We just want to pick up some gel coat. And what I do is I'll, I'll go two ways on this with the first, first coat of gel coat that goes on. We'll go uh, back and forth and then I'll go uh, 90 degrees from that and go back and forth again as you can see like that and get everything coated and then I'll start from where I started and I'll back roll it and um, you'll notice on your rollers uh, depending which way you put it on the sleeve that that it'll give you it'll lay down smooth either going forward or back rolling and uh, whichever way you decide to go uh, as your final coat uh, follow all the way through with the back roll. You can see I'm putting it on quite heavily. You want it to uh, go down and uh, saturate any of the voids that are in the top of the mat. And uh, It's a nice cool fall day so it's a good day for uh, putting down the gel coat. You don't want to put uh, the gel coat down in uh, direct sunlight if you can avoid it. Uh, the extra heat will make it kick off too quickly for you. If you are dealing uh, with anything over 80 degrees, you're going to want to cut back on the uh, catalyst that you're adding to it. Because the, um, the heat of the fiberglass and in the sun is actually going to speed up the curing time for you. So it's going to be a little bit harder to spray, spread. So here it is all done. This is the uh, first coat. You can see there's the odd fly that's landed in it. But uh, we'll, uh, and the curbs are all done. So we'll uh, let that dry and then I'll go uh, around that with a sander and knock off any bumps or anything uh, that are pretty evident. But because this is a roof surface, uh, we're more concerned about it being watertight. And you can see the curbs are all done there on the sides and how they go down on the deck and, and they're all nice and tight in there. So there's the final coat. Uh, that's uh, going on uh, and you can see that it's uh, there you can see how it's uh, how the water will be allowed to flow right off the roof and around the curbs there won't be any flanges that will be screwed or, or nailed down to the roof surface it will be up an inch and a half which will allow all the water to uh, Go around all the uh, roof vents and the skylight walls. So we'll just um, uh, finish up the uh, top of the vent boxes and we'll install our skylight and our vent top and um, then I'll be able to um, put on the uh, trim on the outside of the uh, overhang for our awning and uh, there's the completed roof. I hope you enjoyed this project and if you want more of a detailed project please uh, watch the other videos on our channel. Thanks a lot again. And please subscribe. It helps us bring these videos to you.